Hi, I'm Gino Ariema. We are very proud of the program we have built in Connecticut. This show is about the very special women that have made UConn basketball what it is today. Joining me are Chris Daly, my associate head coach, who's been with me from the beginning, Shay Ralph, captain of the 2000 National Championship team, and now one of my assistants, and Jamel Elliott, one of our only four players in UConn history that have more than 1,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Also one of my assistants, and now the head women's coach at the University of Cincinnati. Well, here we are, Chris Daly, Associate Head Coach at the University of Connecticut, Jamel Elliott, the Head Coach at the University of Cincinnati, and Shay Ralph, Assistant Head Coach at the <laughs> University of Connecticut. Assistant Head Coach. She's Associate Head Coach. Assistant I'm Assistant Head Coach. Head coach. <laughs> yeah, just gave her a new That's title a new now. Title. <laughs> yeah. Those are the rays. You might grow up to be an Associate Head Coach someday. So we got Head Coach, Associate Head Coach, Assistant Head Coach. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, thanks. <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing about it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been speechless. Yeah, I'm sure you would be. Uh, obviously, you know, for obvious reasons, we have to start over here or it's going to be a long interview. Uh, <laughs> by all means. By all means, right? <laughs> um, from the beginning, from 1985 to now, um, when you think back to 1985, what What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Our office. And? How small it was. How, um, I, just that we really didn't have very much to start with. And how you didn't really tell me the truth when you recruited me. Is that the same as <laughs> when you recruited them? Pretty much. <laughs> Something yeah. never changed. Kind of is. <laughs> Embellish some areas and ignore the rest. So, why did you come to Connecticut before I asked them why they came to Connecticut? I came to Connecticut because you challenged me. I, I had, was working at Rutgers. I had played there. I had coached there. And you challenged me to see, you know, you've done that already as a player and a coach. Let's see what we can build at Connecticut. And I felt in terms of professional, professionally that that would help me down the road when I got my own program, that I would know more, I would know how to do it right from the ground level, and uh, that I'd be able to be better prepared. I think it was something like, don't be a big baby the rest of your life, <laughs> and staying home. Well, and the Brunswick. fact that my father said, grow if up. it's not nice to you, you can come home anytime you want, yeah, I think yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah. that was helpful. I said, grow up. It almost happened the first summer because he was annoying during camp, and if I could have packed all my stuff that one night and gone home, I would have. I tried my hardest to make <laughs> her go home. Work, huh? <laughs> um, so when you were being recruited, and when you were being recruited, it was completely different. I think our programs were in two completely different um, eras at that time. Um, what was, what did it mean to you to be recruited by Connecticut at that time? Uh, for me, you know, you guys had just come off of your first Final Four in 1991, and. Um, you know, I knew I wanted to get away from home, being from the inner city of Washington, D.C., and I really enjoyed my relationship with you and Chris Daly, and um, I believed in you and your vision, and I trusted that you would uh, make me the best player that I could be. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed our relationship. Um, I thought she was genuine, and I, you know, I just believed in you, and it helped a little bit that I thought she was cute back then. <laughs> just back then, not anymore. <laughs> So when CED and I came to your school and we were the only white people <laughs> in the school and, and we walked right by you yeah. and you pretended like you didn't know us and didn't see us when it was so stark, that was just a, your way of saying, I think he's cute. Is well, that what you were well, saying? Well, back in the, you know, the kids said today I had to keep my swag. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't let people know that I was actually, you know, she friends with She walked guys. by us and I go, I think that was her. He's like, really? I said, yeah, that was her. <laughs> you know, uh, but the rest is history. The rest right? is history. You were kind of lightly recruited mm -hmm. because you were undersized. Sure. You were the National High School Player of the Year coming out of high school. Two completely different situations. Uh, would, 
Would you kind of re recall that first year when you were a little bit of a problem <laughs> child for us to coach at the University of Connecticut? <laughs> Do you want to recall out some? Of nowhere. some <laughs> what does that have to do with our recruiting? <laughs> could you pro like let the fans know about the issues that happened during your freshman year that caused us, me, and CD to kind of reevaluate whether we wanted to stay in coaching? <laughs> could you give us the that, please? The issue was that you guys were a lot nicer on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you were when I actually got there. You were a lot better player <laughs> watching you from the stands than actually coaching you, so I want you to know that. I remember thinking, is this the same CD? Is this Coach Daly the same person that was on the phone with me? Because this is not, this is different. But the issue was that I didn't want to practice hard, mm. pretty much. And right. it wasn't necessarily hard. I thought it was going hard, but we practiced for an hour in high school. So once that hour hit, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm done. So I'll just run around a little bit, and uh, it was it was a definite adjustment. But you fixed that really well when you benched me <laughs> in, uh, at Rhode Island. I'll never forget it. Um, and you didn't tell me, so I had not been practicing well clearly, and it was early in the season. And you put everybody in the game, and we were winning by 30 or 40. It wasn't even halftime yet. Everybody goes in the game. So I'm usually the sixth player off the bench. So you put, I think, Paige or somebody in first, and I was like, hmm, okay. All right, I'll be next. Then somebody else. Then somebody else. Then you put the walk-on in. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm not, I'm not getting off the bench. <laughs> so at halftime, he was like, this is his question. He comes in, you know, shaking his head. Shay, how many points did you score that half? I mean, clearly none. I was on the bench. How many steals did you get? How many rebounds did you get? Now I'm like angry. I'm mad because he knows what he's doing. And he was like, that's how many you got in the last three weeks of practice. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Is at that point, you can't get mad because he was right. Mm -hmm. right. So I did get an opportunity to play in the second half. She did. And she almost got a triple-double. <laughs> how did you guys feel when you got to be upperclassmen and all those expectations were put on you um, by the coaching staff. Uh, did it make you feel proud? Did it make you feel, oh my God, there's some more pressure? Were you worried, scared? What were you? Well, I think we were ready. I think those first two years, your freshman and sophomore year, you have good leadership and Rebecca and, and Pam and those guys and then CD, you know, letting us know the, the do's and don'ts of Connecticut basketball and you know, and then you, you embrace it. You know, all of a sudden as a junior, you, you start to take ownership. You know, this is my team. And, um, you know, especially with me, my junior year, you know, my Rebecca and, and Pam were seniors. We had just come off a national championship. And, you know, you asked, was it pressure? I did feel pressure because, you know, being in that next class after your seniors leave, after winning a national championship, now all of a sudden that competitiveness comes out and like, okay, I would love to go, go out on top just like the senior class before me did so it was some pressure and I think you know looking back it probably impacted my game a little because I wanted it so bad mm -hmm. for me and Jen and Kim better um, but at the same time I, I think I became a better leader um, you know I went from barking and just wanting things to get done right to understanding that not everybody can take you know being yelled at you know people are motivated and you have to treat people differently so it became a maturity thing for me all around do you remember how t exhausted you were it was me you and Jen in the locker room after we beat Vanderbilt to go to the final four again and I remember you two were just so exhausted said this was so hard yeah yeah this was so hard and I think uh, Jen and I, we had a goal, you know, we knew we had to get to the Final Four. For us, if we didn't get back to the Final Four, it was a failure. You know, and I, being a part of a Connecticut program where, you know, Final Four in 91, National Championship in 95, come 96, you're a senior, if you do anything less than a Final Four, you feel personally that you let the program down. And I think Jen and I had that on our shoulders for a whole year, and I think after that game, we was able to take some of that pressure off. Well, I think as a coach, too, I remember feeling like winning in 95, you didn't want to be a one-hit wonder. Mm -hmm. And so the drive was, we got to do this, we got to right, do this, right. putting more pressure on yourself because you wanted to be, you wanted to be establish yourself and not just be mm -hmm. one-time winner. 
And and then you came in two straight Final Fours, mm -hmm. one national championship, great recruiting class. Mm -hmm. You, Paige Sauer, Stacey Hansmeyer, uh, great expectations. Mm -hmm. Here's Connecticut. Now it's 1997, and we're going through the season. <clears throat> we're undefeated. We're clearly the best team in the country by far. And it's, I, it's the best team we've had up to that point ever. And you were a big part of that. How did that, how did that feel when at the end of the season when we went into the NCAA tournament undefeated? It, it was great. I mean, it, it, you say those things, and you hear people talk about all these great teams and all the undefeated seasons, and you think, you know, I thought coming in as a freshman, not that it was like you guys had been established for a long time, but you were a winning program, and you had won a national championship. And I think coming in, all right, we're gonna, I'm going to come in, I'm going to put on this jersey, and I'm going to win. That's how it's going to work. But it's so much goes into that and there's so much pressure on the coaches to do the right things for the players and on the players to do the right things on the court and all that mixed into the pressure of just being in the tournament mm -hmm. of itself and um, I, I got injured that season towards the end so my feeling going into the tournament was one of helplessness that I you know you not that I could have done anything about it but you feel like you have you finally found a role for me as a freshman on the team. I was finally actually practicing the way that I should, and there was a niche for me on that team, and it felt great. It felt like I should be, I was where I should be. And then you can't play, and you see what it does to your team. And I remember feeling like I don't, I don't want that to ever happen. Even if I get injured again, I want to be able to help mm -hmm. in some way so that that doesn't happen again to my teammates. Coming up. Find out why coaching against UConn is a frustrating proposition for Jamel and Shay. That's next on Gino's Legacy, presented by DeGiorgi Roofing and Siding. Why have you stayed at Connecticut so long when you've had opportunities to go <laughs> other places? And you know... Hot seat! <laughs> and you know the way these players talk about you, how they... All hated you when they were playing there. So you I have. Didn't hate you. I didn't no, say I the know. word hate. No, I didn't. You, <laughs> you have this many players sit here day after day after day and talk about how they didn't like you. No, what, they said they didn't like the things what, I made them do. What that keeps didn't you? Mean they what keeps? Like what, what keeps you at Connecticut all these years? You want me to say you, right? Well, that's that's a given. But expand. <laughs> <laughs> goes without saying. Ex it goes without saying. Expand on that. Why are you still at Connecticut after all these years? Oh, and what do you think your impact is at Connecticut beyond, you know, the headphones and the dress? Well, I think that I've learned that being happy is really important, and I feel like I'm in a place where women's basketball is really important. I feel like I'm respected. I feel like I'm challenged. I feel like I've been given opportunities and, uh, and ownership over the program that not everybody has 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 in in their job and I don't I, you know I, I think it's easy to think it's always better somewhere else mm -hmm. but I really enjoy what I do and I think that I've been able to have an impact on young women through their college years and afterwards and I feel blessed that I've had that um, I also feel like I'm prepared and I'm preparing for the next step whether it's to be a head coach or, or whatever I choose to do that I'm prepared through my experiences at Connecticut but you know, I, I'm in a great place. I, I think as you get old, when you're young, you think you'll go anywhere and you can make it happen anywhere. And I think what I learned was as you get older, you know how hard it is and the things that you need to win at that level. And not every place has that. And I, I'm aware of that. And then as you get older, you don't want to live just anywhere. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to live in Minnesota or Wisconsin, and not that there's anything wrong with those places. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean anything against Minnesota or Wisconsin, but they're cold. Daddy. They're colder than Connecticut. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like your quality of life is important, and the older you get, the more you appreciate that. Your family, the things you know, you have responsibilities. You have different things, and I think that impacts me, and that means a lot to me, and that's part of what the decisions I make. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. I think all those things. The average person doesn't understand um, 
every decision that goes into what's your next decision and how many factors are there. Um, but Jamal, you've told me a number of times why you should be the next head coach at Connecticut instead of CD because <laughs> you have head coaching experience. Uh, why, why, do you, why do you think it was important for you to become a head coach? Um, first of all, you know, I think I learned under two two of the best coaches in the country for 12 years as an assistant coach and then plan for you guys for four years. Um, I think, you know, you come to a point in yourself that you feel like it's time and you don't know when it's going to be. You don't know why it is, but you just feel this urge and you're eager to do something else. And um, not to take anything away from working for you guys. And, you know, I, I could have worked for, with you forever. But at the same time, I didn't want to be in that comfort zone any longer. You know, it was safe. I knew everybody. I felt comfortable being around you guys. We became great friends. I was still learning, but it just came a point in time where I wanted something else. And um, obviously, I wasn't going to leave Connecticut for just any place. And, you know, I always, seeing you and learning from you, I always had aspirations of building a program like you. And I didn't want to go to a program that was already established. I wanted to go to a program where I can make my mark and see it grow similar to what you guys did when you first came to Connecticut. So, Which kind of parallels, it's funny, that's how you approach coming to school. Mm -hmm. You know, now you do it all over again, yep. except instead of going to school, you're going to go coach. Mm -hmm. When it's time to prepare for Connecticut basketball, as opposed to preparing for any other school that you play against, what's the biggest difference? Well, you, I mean, for me... It's Other than the fact that we have the best players. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a given. For me, the big difference is, and, you know, not that I'm a control freak, I know exactly what you can do, what you want to do, and there's nothing I can do about it. I know the play calls. I know all everything. Especially my first year, you probably changed a lot now, but I felt helpless knowing in my head that I knew exactly what you was going to do, who can do what, but I didn't have the players or the ability to do anything about it. What, what would you yeah. say? Yeah, similar. I, I felt I didn't want to overwhelm our players. I mean, they were already scared to death, and I was scared to death. <laughs> but I, I just remember I didn't, you know what they're going to do, but you also want to go in there, and, you, and I wanted our players to be successful on some level, to leave there not feeling like complete crap about themselves, which is almost, even though you guys are awesome and, and you put in every player in the first half and you take care of us in that oh, way. Oh, he ran the score up on me. And That's he took not care of you. I did right not. Oh, wow. He ran the score up on you. <laughs> that is, that is such all. a lie. <laughs> but you, you want, you feel... It's hard because you're torn. My heart, obviously, is always going to be with Connecticut. But at the same time, I want to help these players. And you're, I, I'm watching them, and I'm just thinking, oh, you know, I, the scouting reports like Diana Taurasi, Sue Bird, the, I mean, <laughs> Olympic team people. And I'm thinking, this is going to be ugly, but we're going to try. <laughs> we're going to try. Coming up, why did Gino once consider leaving UConn? Find out next as Gino's legacy continues. How do you feel when you go around the state of Connecticut speaking at different things and doing different things and people treat you and talk about you and uh, associate you and refer to you as the real head coach at Connecticut? <laughs> does that bother you at all? Does that make you feel sorry for me? Does, does that impact you at all in any way, knowing that... Um, I just say thank you. That I'm really the person who makes this engine go and you're just uh no or do I, you actually feel like you're the head coach at connecticut oh no i'm the head coach because <laughs> that's what i tell everybody <laughs> well if i made the money the head coach at connecticut made then it would make me feel even better but let's just keep it the way it is <laughs> <laughs> wait i have a question coach why yeah. why have you been at connecticut for so long why haven't you left i tried to <laughs> You know, I tried to uh, on a number of occasions. Um, early on, you know, um, in the early 90s, you know, um, th there was an opportunity that I thought, and uh, it didn't work out because I thought, I don't think Connecticut's ever going to become what it, 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 it could be somewhere else. Um, 
So that was probably the first time when I thought, you know, th this wouldn't be a bad time to go. You know, we've gone to the Final Four, we've done this, we've done that. And um, then all of a sudden, it became the place where you thought you would go to have it. Mm -hmm. This became it. So why go someplace to get something you already have? And you'll probably never have it be like it is here. It would be impossible to go someplace and have it the way we have it here, given all the things that we have at the University of Connecticut, the people of, of Connecticut, the way our fan base is, how we're treated at the university, what kind of players we're able to recruit. You know, uh, I don't know that we could go anywhere else and have it be like that. Be on SNY, <laughs> that in there, you know? Um, so that's, and, and my family's grown up there, and like Chris said, you know, it's, it's not easy to just uh, think that the grass is greener someplace else, and, and uh, you, you, you develop roots, and my family's roots are in Connecticut, and that's where probably my kids are going to live the rest of their lives, and uh, I, I think there's something to be said for that, that I've won every one of my games at the same school, mm. you know, and very few, very few coaches can say that. And, and I feel pretty. I feel pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. And enjoying what you do, I think so. Well, that's often different. I'm not saying I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so often you're always talking about what you don't have or what you don't. And I think being able to enjoy what you do have is important too. And I think we can enjoy what we've done and what we do have at Connecticut. What do you think is? Remember how hard it was every year to have to go undefeated. As a coach, when I was an assistant. When you were an assistant coach here, how every year, if we didn't go undefeated, we felt like that was lousy. Yep. That was a lousy team. This was a lousy coaching job, lousy everything. Are you kind of <laughs> happy you're not in that situation, or do you miss that situation? Or a little bit of both? What a is little it? bit of both. Um, you know, my first year at Cincinnati was probably the most humbling year of my life because I had been so used to going to the NCAA tournament, going to the Final Four, possibly winning the national championship every year for 14 years. 12 as an assistant and then two, you know, my junior year and my senior year. So to go from that to taking over the program, it was very humbling. And I think I've probably learned more about myself as a person and it made me appreciate what I had before, but at the same time knowing that where you started, you had to build and I'm I'm actually enjoying the process you know it's not as much pressure obviously that we had at Connecticut mm -hmm. but I do put just as much pressure on myself because right. I still want to be just as good and put a great product on the floor is it going to equate to wins and losses more wins than losses right now no but I think I'm building a solid foundation so hopefully two or three years from now if not next year I might be going to I'm still going to start to be able to benefit with the wins and losses, but right now I'm benefiting in other ways and, you know, how I'm, out, how I'm developing my character, the players, their character, you know, the academic part of it, the work ethic, what I expect and things like that. So right now for me it's small victories until we can get the, the real W's. Speaking of small victories, CD, do you ever feel bad when we beat Cincinnati's brains out? Do you ever feel bad? I do. That's maybe the only time when we're playing someone that we know, that we're friendly with, and I, I feel... That don't stop you guys from kicking out. No, though. but I feel badly about it. <laughs> but I feel bad. Well, were you? well, you would never want us to say don't no, play. No, I right. know. So of any other school that you play against in our league, is there anybody you want to beat more than us? Yeah, but I refuse to uh, <laughs> say who that is. Would and any now win, we got Tanya coming into what, the league. What, would any win mean more than that, though? Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely not. I probably right. want to beat Connecticut more than anybody on our schedule. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's funny? If there's anybody that I wouldn't mind us losing a game to would be wherever you're the head coach going forward, or now certainly Cincinnati, uh, and I know Chris feels the same way. If you're ever going to lose a game, you know, University of Hartford, mm -hmm. uh, just like you guys will always be part of Connecticut basketball, uh, I know I speak for Chris, we're always going to be part of you guys, and you're always going to be part of us. And that's why things like this are so special. 
And uh, I want to thank you for making the effort to come out here, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, It was great. Awesome. That was fun. You're welcome.